Hey everyone, welcome to some very low stakes uh, artistic retouching with Photoshop. Is hey everyone, done? welcome. And <clears throat> so I thought we'd delve a little bit into uh, our portrait and boudoir touching, retouching workflow because it's a little different from the wedding stuff we do since most of these tend to be purchased a la carte and by image we spend a little more time with things since product and to sort of go over a little bit more about our retouching philosophy get and understand ahead what we're skipping in this process is the Lightroom uh, steps where we do a uh, basic selection, uh, where we do our color correction and basic exposure correction. This, because it's beyond, beside the point, also from this particular set, which we shot uh, Saturday with our model, there were some not safe for work elements that aren't appropriate for Twitch or general audiences. So, so this is basic like face stuff. There's a little soft focus issue going on, but here. Uh, so the first thing we want to look at again, not ideal. A lot to get those like just tack sharp, but this was the thing we grabbed at the last second. Uh, a little wider depth of field would have been better. It's dark room. Uh, this is a continuation from a board game set we had shot, so you can see there are card elements in there. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a new layer. Uh, I like to do that just uh, to have the backup here even though everything's backed up in Lightroom also lets you do a quick compare and contrast once you're done uh, first step is just to do a little re basic reshaping and contrast work with the dodge and burn tools sort of darken up the shadows brighten up the highlights can to draw in attention around where we And darker areas tend to swim out a little bit. Definition. Oops. And it's also important in Photoshop to be careful of where, <laughs> which layer you're working on. See, you can already see some differences. That's, that's the quick work here. We'll also dodge this. We want to bring up the eye, the whites of the eyes just a little bit. Teeth. Also going to do a tiny bit of color correction there and make these pop out a little bit more. Now, in general, as we work with um, just regular everyday people who are, you know, doing these things as a gift for friends or family or ahead of a wedding. What I like to pitch as part of our retouching process is that it's sort of like a perfected version of your own imperfections, although that's maybe it a lot of people know like you know about their flaws about the things that they want to diminish in a picture but are still part of their appearance and part of their sort of physical character so we don't want to necessarily get rid of those like we don't want to say like oh you have this perfect complexion when like like about yourself it might be something that makes you distinct because it's very easy in Photoshop 
to do something where you basically turn everyone into Stepford wives who have a very uniform type and appearance and sort of this overall plastic look. I mean, that takes just like two seconds with some filters to make happen. So first things first is we are going to use the old anime trick. Hey guys, eyes are a good focal point. They really draw attention and communicate a lot, which is why when you're doing a good job, you should get focus. Here. Copy. You only get the brows because the brows are generally in tune with the rest of the eye. Now, if we were doing a more general portrait, we'd have a little more that we'd want to dodge. Because again, the, the shadows tend to slim, and, the, uh, and uh, you want to kind of do the opposite along some other things to give more definition and shape and then just enhance that. Uh, here, where it's, it's mainly the portrait, this hand, this action, sort of the look, that's less needed. I think the lighting coming in this side has already done a lot of work. Which is why, you know, get it right in camera as much as you can. Okay, so let's start with this. We're gonna hold T. Just want. So what our, our thought is, is, is again, this, this sort of idea of taking what's na naturally already there and enhancing it. Ink these. You're just pushing things a little to be, be sort of the best version of yourself, to diminish some of those passing flaws and marks and sort of like be less somewhat be less this magazine version of beauty and more like the image that kind of carry around in our we wish we carried around in our heads of ourselves so that's like cleaning up like cuts and scratches diminishing the appearance of like fine lines and wrinkles so we're not like getting rid of character or age because for a lot of our clients, it's just like, well, that, that's that's a fact of life. That's that's something that you're going to deal with. So, see, more pop and a little more room to work with, with just a slight change. And so, what we also do here is we're going to mask off eyes because you can see where we've changed it here. It's causing an issue here. So. And so what we do is feather the mask a little more. Hmm. This is not match blending as well as I thought it would. Usually, that's a little better because you're basically taking the same tones and colors. Just a bit more. Again, we'd want more. I normally I'd want more sharpness there throughout. 
All right, now we'll take a look at this eye. Again, we're gonna mask around it. This should be a little easier. Transitions are more uniform. Again, you can see when you're working close up, like how much that depth of field can really affect things. Uh, Cause this is in focus and just behind it, like, you gotta be careful of where you're And I like the, the lines overall enough to kind of ignore that. Then we're going to do some general eye enhancements. So first is to see how much sharpening we can get. Let's make a new. As you can see, here's what we've done so far of dodging and burning. Tiny enhancement here. All right, so let's bring some sharpness back here. Want to just cut this out. Add. If I was feeling particularly ambitious, we could just repaint these in. I think we should be able to do this kind of procedurally. So we're going to unsharp mask. So we'll do actually. Copy. Again, because we're, we're doing things in layers, so if we need to dial something back, we always can. And here, so this is not attractive on its own. But what we want here isn't necessarily what we're, we're doing here isn't necessarily end result we're going for because we want to create shape and definition here sort of enhance the lines that are already present do that sharpening so much other things I want to do at the white you can see in here there's also a slight line from a contact lens some discoloration so those are going to get cleaned up just a little bit here do is dial that back And you also have to be careful when you're uh, working with these, uh, when you're in Photoshop and the like, is to think about how the image is going to be used holistically, to how the image is going to be displayed and viewed. So again, this is, this is a large file. And this is basically an inch. Like so, so realistically, print size. Print size is going to be something like uh, an 8 by 10, maybe. So it's, you know, you're, you're going to be less focused and going to see less action that way. Or at least that's my excuse. Also do your a 
layer. Also do in this with the color just a little bit. Curves. Take our blue. Should be a way. Curves. Here we go. Uh, come in with our blue. Good. Up the saturation a tiny bit. And a little more pop. Also gonna do with the eyes here. And on this layer, let's clear them up just a little bit. So you can see, if you had your, your druthers, you could do an awful lot with just painting. There's a whole lot you can accomplish there. Again, uh, here is this step. Basic enhancements to the eyes. Contrast. Here. Now, uh, these are mostly all right. Still yellowing. And there are different ways you can approach the mouth. Like if you want to sort of fix teeth or realign them, you can certainly do that. To bring down the channel just a little bit. So what you can also just do is auto color that can introduce artifacts like that it's better to do it saturation i find is fine so i want to get rid
Yellow's pulled off in that. That's fine. And a little do and a little bit more dodge. Brighter. Except bring that down to five. Again, these are like tiny differences that you're putting over an image. Big change ultimately make big changes. So and a lot of small changes. Tooth I want to get here. Here. again and that levels. Sometimes there's a little like green or red in there. See that works a it's, it's making small incremental changes to make an image pop. Starts when you help out, uh, when you begin uh, for best practices, best practices in camera. Uh, now we're just quick skin smoothing. So what I like to do for that is again, it, you can take a painting approach or you can take sort of a procedural approach and it to, I like to take the Made it approach. Actually, want to use these bags too. So we're just a little bit. Take our paint, our healing brush tool. Just nudge this a little bit. Again, you don't. You want to be kind of sparing with these. Because while these tools are great, they're not perfect. They tend to create areas that look smooth. Pay attention, you you end up with like that. Where you can see <coughs> some of the artificiality spread out right in front of you. I think I forgot to feather this. Yeah, but yeah. Brighten up the under. So, yeah, I guess sometimes you don't get your best night's sleep. Shoot. So we reduce this a little bit. Spring tiny should be there. Again, this is this is saying like, okay, you know, it's not you're not this. You're not a robot. You have pores. And there, th I'm not saying that like this is the only correct and proper approach, but just like bringing in that realism and the imperfection. Turn back to the image. A that like the smooth magazine shot, a magazine type approach doesn't always gonna look at masks again we want color range we want to cover this pretty much it's a little less fuzzy range because again, I want to stick to the face primarily. Out here. Okay. That's that's by and large what we want to cover with the mask. 
So what this is gonna what this is gonna do is gonna be our pass. So poor pours uh, computer thinks uh you know like procedurally noise this is noise like it's it's a uh, disturbance to the uniformity of an image like there's no difference between the the patterns of pores and discoloration on a skin and and like stat essentially static from the computer's perspective so it treats it in the same way it solves that problem in the same way which is useful because you don't need a lot of specialized filters. you just go in patches and say okay what's the level i want to take this at so this is this, this is a little extreme but again this is start in this place and we're going to dial it back Toggle on vis visibility on the mask to paint back in some of our definition first in areas where it's most important. So we don't want fuzzed out eyebrows, should have definition. The hairline should have definition, as should the hair. Because again, you don't want this perfectly smooth helmet. That looks weird. Brows, eyelashes, and all things that should be sharp. And ideally, if you shot the image right in the first place, they are sharp. Sometimes, though, you just take the image you got and you, you roll with it. Uh, lips should have definition. Like some things you want to be, want to have tack sharp. And other things, again, hold on. General shape of the face. Okay, see? Uh, if we... Enable the layer mask, like this is what it will look like. Enable it, you can see more of a person emerging. Looks more like a photograph. This kind of gets to looking like a painting. Let's do this here. Yeah, that's that's mostly some Photoshop work. We we popped that out earlier on this on this layer. And that was just a pretty quick adjustment. Uh, and I think the last step in the process is to take the smooth skin smoothing we've done. Because again, there were there were freckles, there was some complexion here, and just sort of bring it back to an area. might do because the freckling is here just do a micro adjustment on the layer itself it's coming in just a little bit we don't have as much on forehead and blackheads and that kind of thing. Uh, in here. Bring that back just a little bit with another quick burn. Again, that's that's sort of setting up a separation. That is about it. So we've gone, that's a basically finished image. Uh, most of the work was in the eyes, uh, making them a little bigger, making them pop a little more. 
uh, fixing some, uh, making some micro adjustments on the contact lens, bringing in some sharpness, uh, adding some contouring over to the face. Because a lot of what you're doing in, in Photoshop is basically what people are doing with makeup. So makeup tutorials are a good place to start with if you're starting with Photoshop, but yeah. So big eyes, smooth skin, whitened teeth, a little more shape added in here. That's it. Thanks everyone for bye, and have a great day. We're going to look at some more images uh, later on and talk more about getting prepped for a session and some more client focused things, but I hope everyone has a great day.